So the lap joint is fastened together using a bolt having a failure stress of 300 megapascals. Determine the required cross-sectional area of the bolt to support a 20 kN applied load, P, and we're going to assume the uniform shear distribution and a safety factor of 2.5. So I'm just going to quickly jot down all the information that we're given. So we know that we have a failure stress in shear of 300 megapascals. We're asked to find the cross-sectional area, so that's A, and the force that's applied is 20 kilonewtons, and we have to use a safety factor of 2.5. So in order to design our bolt, the equation, the main one that we need to use, is that the shear stress tau is equal to the shear force V divided by the cross-sectional area, and we're interested in finding this. Okay. So we're going to need um, kind of two steps to find tau and to find V. To find tau, we want to find the allowable stress. And we're going to do that based on the failure stress and the safety factor. For V, the shear force, we should be able to get that from a free body diagram. So let's start with tau. And the equation that we have for safety factor is that it's equal to the failure stress divided by the allowable stress. So we want to design this for the allowable, not for failure. So rearranging. And then substituting in. So it's going to be 300 divided by 2.5. And we find that we need a allowable of 120 megapascals. All right, so the next thing to work on is going to be V, the shear force. So we're going to get this from our free body diagram of the bolt. So drawing this bolt, I'm going to draw it um, the direction through the material here. So we can see that the top side of it is getting pulled one way and the bottom side here is pulling it the other way and that's what's creating the shear. So we were told the force that was applied to it was 20 kilonewtons. So we can pop those onto our diagram. And what we need to do is determine the internal shear force, okay? So in order to do that, we want to cut through the material where we think the maximum shear is occurring, which is going to be in between here. And once we cut it, we expose the internal force and we should be able to solve for it. So we need to redraw either the top or the bottom side of this diagram. I might just go with the top. So carrying it across, we have the 20 kilonewtons. And then we've cut it off, which is where this is. So we've exposed the internal force. And the shear one is V. And that's the one we're interested in. So we know on this diagram, the sum of the forces have to be equal to zero for it to be in equilibrium. So that's going to mean V, the internal shear, has to be equal to 20 kilonewtons. So now we've got the internal shear and we have the allowable shear stress. We should be able to figure out the cross-sectional area. So let me just pop down here. So rearranging for A and then substituting in. So this is in kilonewtons at the moment. I'm going to put this into newtons, which means I need to times it by a thousand. And then it gets divided by the allowable shear stress, which is 120 megapascals. And if I leave this in megapascals, that means I'm working in newtons and MPA. And newtons divided by MPA will give you meter, uh, sorry, millimeters squared out at the end. So that's what I'm going to do. Remember that if you're uncomfortable with those conversions, just go back to base. So if you convert this into pascals, you have newtons divided by pascals, which should give you mil, uh, sorry, meters squared out at the end. Anyway, so newtons divided by megapascals gives us millimeters squared. And this works out to about 166.7. So if we go back and look at the potential answers, we can see that that is indeed one of them. So that's what I'd answer this question with.